is that when you ask God to do something in your life, he's going to do it. He's going to make you become this. You said you want it. And guess what? God is going to give you the desires of your heart. Welcome to another episode of Faithful Hustler. I am your host, Ashley Pitts, and we have to catch up because I missed out on updating you last week. And now I am on the final week of my 21 day Daniel fast. So stay tuned if you want to know what I ate and what I've learned throughout the last two weeks. Stay tuned. Oh, wait, wait. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Let's dig in. All right. So again, welcome back to the channel. Um, unfortunately, I did miss out last week because over the weekend we went to go visit my sister in Pittsburgh. So I wasn't able to bring all of my equipment uh, with me to take the video. So I said I'm just going to combine week two and week three together and um, just give you a final review of the 21 day fast for the last two weeks. Or just say overall for the last three weeks. So Sunday... The 22nd of January will be our last day doing this and we've learned so much throughout it uh, but I'm not going to speak on behalf of my husband I'm going to speak only on behalf of myself so if you watch the first video I told you that coming into the new year I want to be more obedient so the, my theme for this year is obedience or be obedient just be obedient also, something that I wanted to do more of is give. Okay, so before I get into the foods, because I think last time I started with the foods and I ended it, ended the video with more of what I've learned, I'm going to flip it this time and I'm going to go ahead and start with what I've learned. But before we actually get into this video, the Holy Spirit has been talking to me and said, start your videos off with a prayer. So let's go ahead and start with prayer, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so very much for waking us all up this morning and starting us on our way. Holy Spirit, I invite you into this video. I invite you into my mind, my heart, and my spirit. I invite you into those who are viewing this video, into their minds, their hearts, and their spirits, Lord God, that we can connect with one another, that you will resonate inside of each and every single one of us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we're learning more about you together. And that we are filled with your presence together in the name of Jesus. What you have for us is for us. What we need to get out of this is for us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That we will be challenged. That we will grow. That we will learn. And that we will be affected uh, by what you are going to be sharing with us. Through me, Lord God, I ask that you use me as your vessel. Share with me the thoughts that you want me to say with that, with um, out of my mouth, Lord God. Lord God, help me to be true to everything that I'm saying. Be real, be authentic, um, to be uh, relatable, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I don't want to embellish anything, Lord God. So let me be true with my experience with the 21-day journey um, on this Daniel fast in the name of Jesus. And I pray that this will lead other people to fast and to pray, and to read their word, and to be closer to you each and every single day, Lord God, that they too will take this leap of faith, and that they too will go ahead and take this uh, journey uh, along with you, Holy Spirit, along with you, God, along with you, Jesus, so that they can uh, become closer to you in the name of Jesus. And as they take the leap of faith, and as they do the fast, I pray, Lord God, that you will speak through them, you will be right, right with them, that you will teach them about themselves, and that uh, the old ways of themselves will die, and that new ways will be born in the name of Jesus, that, so that they will be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, I do ask and pray. Amen, amen, amen. So, welcome back, guys. Every video now, I'm going to start off with a prayer. That felt so good. Inviting the Holy Spirit to come uh, into this conversation that we're having. Or in this video. Really. So, I, I want to be, again, authentic. I want to be real. Oh, my goodness. Ah! Right now, I'm sorry I'm changing the subject. But I just feel so comfortable right now in front of this camera. Because it's not me anymore. My old self has died, right? Because, again, if you watch my first two videos or yeah first two videos you will see 
where, where, I, uh, where I said that I was insecure a little bit about being in front of the camera doing this. And I feel so very comfortable right now. I feel great doing this. Ah! <laughs> um, oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. So that just hit me just now. This is a moment right now where, oh, my goodness. God is so good. Right now, I am feeling confident because praying in the spirit allowed the spirit to be within me and allowing me to do this right now. Because right now, Ashley is not here. This is nothing besides me. I mean, this is nothing besides God speaking through me. Amen. All right. So, I really hope that you guys can understand what I'm feeling because if you are connected to the Holy Spirit, so you know when the Holy Spirit is using you, you just flow. You just flow easily, right? Hallelujah. With no distractions, being getting in the way, you're just you're just in the zone. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So right now, I'm going to tell you about the things that I've learned or what I've seen uh, in the last uh, two weeks. Okay. So again, I spoke about how I wanted to be a better giver. I wanted to be able to give and give not only of money but time and to give resources. And yes, money, and to be just more uh, aware of what people need when they need it, right? And do it humbly, and do it without expectation of anything from them. Uh, do it with love, and that's what I want to become more of: is a bigger giver. And and God, oh my gosh, God has given me opportunities these last two weeks to just give and I have a list of the things that I've experienced throughout this uh, this time and, and I'm sharing it with you not again to give me any praise it's just that when you ask God to do something in your life he's going to do it he's going to make you become this you said you want it and guess what God is going to give you the desires of your heart. Now the question is, are you ready for what you're asking for? Because it's going to be opportunities for you to to show it, right? Uh, is that the right word I'm looking for? It's going. He's going to give you opportunities to be just what you want to be. You just have to seize the moment. So if I want to be a bit bigger giver, guess what? He's giving me opportunities where people are in need for me to give. But if I turn my back at those opportunities, I'm not growing in that area. I'm just all talk with no action, okay? So he has given me so many ways to be a giver. So starting off with, I was at the grocery store and I was ringing out and this lady next to me, she was having a hard time with her card. And so the spirit came to me and said, just pay for her groceries, pay for her groceries. And she was very thankful, came out to be like $113. And I went ahead and said, you know, God is telling me to go ahead and pay for your groceries. Not a big conversation, nothing lengthy. I said, and you know, she's like, are you sure? I said, yes, I'm very sure. Let me go ahead and pay for your groceries. And I did. She's like, wow, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then afterwards, um, she turned around again. She was like, I just want to say thank you again. I was like, you know, I just want to let you know, God loves you. <sighs> yes. She was like, yes. I said, God bless you. Just know that God is, he, he loves you. And she said, thank you. All right, moving on. Another time, um, I was at a, I was at the storage looking for some sneakers because they had a really big sneaker sale at Burlington. Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe the prices of these sneakers. These are sneakers that I've seen in like Foot Action and Foot Locker for a hundred something dollars, and they was at Burlington for like thirty two dollars and ninety nine cents. I was like, OMG, right? So I'm there by myself early in the morning. And so a young girl comes up to me and she's like, um, ma'am, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I was just, I just was wondering if you can just help me out. 
me and my brother, uh, we, you know, we're, we, we're looking for, for a couple dollars if you can help us out with so we can get something to eat. Again, I'm so sorry, so sorry to bother you. I, I, I really don't want to ask, but I just said, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. She was a young girl. She said she was about 16 years old, 16, 17 years old. So I digged in my purse and I found about two or three dollars and I gave it to her. Then I went back and I said, Lord, let me pray for you. And I said, what is your name? She told me her name. So keep in prayer, guys. Lisa and Kai. Keep in prayer, Lisa and Kai, okay? So um, I prayed with her. And she was really, she's like, are you sure? And I said, let me pray. No, before I said, let me pray with you. That's what I said. I said, let me pray with you. She said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm very sure. Let me pray with you. So I said a prayer with her um, after giving her the two, two or three dollars. And then um, something came upon me that was like, you know, take her across the street and um, buy her some food. It was like a family dollar. I was at Burlington, so the nearest grocery store, I have no idea where it's at, but I knew, I knew, I knew that family dollar sells food. So I told her, I said, hold on real quick, because I was going to buy me some stickers. I had saw some stickers that I like, and so I said, hold on real quick. I'm going to walk you across the street. I'm going to get you some food, right? Because she said she was hungry. So now I'm like, the 2 $3 ain't going to do nothing for her and her brother, so let me go ahead and, 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 and actually get you some, a whole thing of groceries, right? So I said, but let me just go ahead and pay for these shoes first. <laughs> this is where the Holy Spirit kicked back in. So I'm in line. I'm like, oh, there's a long line. Because the last time I came, it was not a long line at all. So I was like, I could just get in and get out, right? But the Spirit was like, no, nah, man. You want to have this girl wait? Because <laughs> there was a line now. You want to have this girl wait? Those shoes aren't important. Matter of fact, you can't even fit them right. You just getting them just to get them. Now I'm just being selfish. To a, or not even selfish. I wouldn't call it selfish. I'm not being selfish. I was being greedy in a sense. I did not need. I didn't need the shoes in the first place. I'm just buying the shoes just because it's a good deal. So I didn't need the shoes. So the Holy Spirit's like, you don't need the shoes, and you can't fit the shoes. You're just gonna get the shoes because of the, the color. You know what I mean? The, the shoes was like, it was a little off on how it was fitting, and I was like, so I'm in line. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna have this girl wait. So I put the shoes down. So her and I, we walked across the street. So now she's on the phone talking to her brother. And her brother, uh, I guess, was being watched by somebody else. And so she almost had to go because of the fact that he, whoever was watching him, couldn't watch him anymore. So I said, well, this won't take long. Let me go ahead and walk you across the street. So I started to get familiar with who she was. And she said, you know, I, I come here by, you know, in between school time. So right now, today, we don't have school. So um, I'm here trying to see if I can get some help or some assistance. I said, wow, okay. She said, well, ma'am, what's your name? I said, my name is Ashley. She said, I just want to say thank you so much for the prayer. Thank you so much for the prayer. I, I wasn't expecting that. That prayer alone, is, it, is, it, it was, that's good enough for me. I said, it's okay. I said, oh, wow, that's beautiful, baby. But no, I'm going to help you out. So we went to Family Dollar, and I said, I got a cart, and I'm start filling up the cart with stuff. She's like, oh, no, ma'am. I, I would hate to, for you to buy all this food, and we can't keep it in our house, in our area, in our house. In our room. No, she said, in our room. I said, what do you mean? She's like, well, if we keep it in our room, stuff like this, like mice and rats can get to it, or somebody might steal our food. I said, well, what kind of situation are you in? She said, well, we're in a situation where we share a house. So we have one room to the house. And sometimes my mom is there. Sometimes she'll be gone for a week, and sometimes she's not. I said, so you are your, like, brother's caregiver. She was like, yeah. I said, well... Well, what would you want to have? What can you have in there? I said, what about some cans that you can open up? She was like, yeah, but nah, uh, yeah, but nah. Um, somebody might come in there and steal it. We can't have that much stuff in the room. I was like, oh, babe. I said, so she said, do you have any like hot foods or whatever? I said, well, what I had was a car that could only get cold foods. I said, I can get cold foods, but not really so much hot foods. Uh, and it slipped my mind, uh, and God forgive me, and he did, and it's really, 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 really slipped my mind that I could have just got her some hot food, but around there, it wasn't really much there, right? Like, it wasn't restaurants right around there for her to get hot food, but at the same time, I could have, and I wasn't thinking that way. Um, I was, I was so mad at myself because I wasn't thinking that way to just get hot foods at whatever wherever I can find right for her brother at that moment at that time I was thinking long term groceries but I didn't feel convicted for that but after the fact I was like hmm I could have dang it right uh, whatever but but 
it, that wasn't that wasn't the point though because she was like she could have had anything in that store and I had to kind of force her to get something get something get something a, a small bag of chips get some more she's like it's no it's okay it's okay really ma'am Ashley your prayer alone has done enough your prayer alone I, I, I can't believe you did it do you do this all the time I'm like no I don't do this all the time but when God tells me to do it I do it you know um I was like, do you want something? Take something out of here. Get something to drink. Get something for your brother Kai. So then she picks up like two sprites and like a thing of cookies. She's like, no, this is good enough. I promise you, this is good enough. So I was like, are you sure? She was like, I'm sure. I'm like, oh, babe, I just want to get you the whole store if I could. Like, take everything. I want y'all to have laundry. I don't. I don't want you to have a quick snack. I wanted to get you meals. You know what I mean? But if she didn't have a place to put it, store it, if she didn't have a microwave to use, I guess like she was like she was saying it, it would be it would be wasted. And she was like, you would have spent this money for nothing. Um, so we left the store and I told her to give uh, to take my number. Here's my number. She plugged it in her phone. I said, call me whenever. You need me. Call me. Okay? Call me. And what's crazy is she wasn't even from the city of Philadelphia. She was living in a different city called Chester, which is right outside of Philadelphia. But for her to travel all the way up there to me, which is like an appointed time that I was there at that moment at that time. And I met with her because I've been in that store. I ain't going to hold you probably like three four times that same week and i've never seen her there but that day she was there and she happened to come to the right person because she didn't walk away with um with food she walked away with jesus knowing that jesus loves her and i also asked her too after the prayer i forgot to mention this i also asked her do you know jesus do you know jesus and i kept saying throughout the time that we were together don't forget to call on the name of jesus i kept saying that call on him Call on him. Talk to him. Let him know what's, what's going on in your heart. He knows already, but he wants to hear from you. Call him, and he will come through for you. And I'm letting her know, reminding reminding her that Jesus is there for you. Amen? So that was the second time. Um, also, there was another time where I'm walking my kids to school. Walking my kids to school. I see two pit bulls running across the street, right? By the time I'm walking, my kids are ahead of me. I'm walking behind them, giving them some space. They're a little older. They're like eight and seven years old. Giving them some space. So two dogs walk across the street after they already have passed. And I'm seeing this one pit bull start attacking a woman who's walking her dog, her small dog, okay? Her small dog. And this dog is biting the crap out of her dog, right? So I'm like, at first, I didn't. it didn't look like a dog fight to me. Because there was another man that was there around her. And I'm thinking it was his dogs. And they were just playing. You know how sometimes dogs play. And they, they nibble out each other's ears and necks and stuff. So that's what I thought it was. At first. So I'm just walking by. And then I'm seeing this dog. And uh, just kind of like not playing back. But getting bit on his neck. And um, the woman is like. Help. Somebody help. Somebody help. My dog. My dog. Get up my dog. So she's older. She has to be around 65. I'll give her probably like, yeah, anywhere between 60 to 65 years old. And she has a cast on her on her left arm. And again, there was two pit bulls, but the one wasn't fighting. It was, it was, you had a white dog and you had a black dog. The black dog was fighting this other, uh, her little, her little white dog. But the other white dog that came across the street with the other pit bull, the two pit bulls, he was just kind of like, you know, being like a bodyguard walking around. He was calm. He was cool. He wasn't. He wasn't barking. He wasn't aggressive or, or or anything. It was just the other dog that was just came out of the gate, just attacking this dog. Right? It's sorry to keep saying dogs, but there was three dogs. Uh, one's the victim, and two were just you know. One was the victim. One was the uh, aggressor, and the other one was just chilling. So I'm like, oh my goodness, this is really a dog fight. Like, oh my goodness, somebody help, somebody help, because I'm not a. I like animals, but I'm not an animal. Like, like I know how to tame an animal. You got a pit bull bite another dog. What you think I can do, right? So, luckily, 
<laughs> what I can do is find some help because this older lady is on the ground with her cat trying to get the, her dog from this other pit bull and it's pit bull which is only like just focus on her dog and her dog only and then the other dog is just kind of walking around just uh, minding its business basically um, walking around minding its business kind of keeping control of people's trying to step in so as you walk a little closer the other dog the other pit bull is walking towards you like hold up man you want to back up this ain't your fight another man was trying to stop it and he would walk towards him like come on sir you need to back up this ain't your fight right the cars was coming the whole trolley was coming up the street and the white dog stopped in the front of the the, the trolley tracks and was trying to say to this uh this trolley hold up trolley need to back up this ain't your fight right so i'm like oh my goodness uh, what do i do there was a cop at the top of the uh street because he was conducting uh the traffic for the kids and so making sure they can cross the street he was doing a crosswalk so i'm like help officer help officer help right so then my kids see me trying to flag him so they tell him listen there's a dog fight down there so i'm waving over here at first a couple seconds good old time coming down this lady is on the ground almost wrestling this the dog it was crazy right and then he finally comes down and then other cops came and so i gave him my my story what i saw just so she has a witness now <clears throat> that was a form of help because she was she needs other people's voices to be heard right so i was able to tell them what i saw now I didn't give them my name and all the information that they always try to dig for. I think my, my testimony was good enough and it was another lady that was there and it was another man that was there. So having our three uh, statements verbally was good enough for me. I don't need them to have my name and, and all this extra stuff. But I was able to get the help that she needed at that time get by grabbing the attention of the cops have my kids go ahead and get that uh, cops attention and be able to you know sort everything out so that was another um, testimony there um, I got my sister some sneakers I was like these sneakers again are so super cheap so I thought about her she said she wanted to start working out and she that she's not really into like buying sneakers for herself she don't really care about that stuff so I was like you know what the sneakers are so cute I'm gonna get her a pair so that's another form of giving just to give it um, my mother-in-law she needs her, her she has a arthritis in her right knee and I see her limping all the time something came to me like hey, well, she needs like a knee brace so I went out and got her a knee brace um, what else? Um, I helped my friend move into her, move out of her apartment, got her a U-Haul to help her to store, you know, to travel from her apartment to the storage, help put it into the storage with my friend. I went like about 45 minutes up the road to go get her a check that she needed by a certain day and time but that was another form of, of of giving giving all these opportunities that god has given me to give and i'm so grateful to do it and it's not without i'm not complaining about it if i'm able to do it guess what i'm a yes girl yes i can do it she called me on the phone she's all the way out of town oh ash i really if you don't mind i'm so sorry to ask you again you just helped me move but if you don't mind could you go pick up a check for me because i have to get it by friday and you know and i'll be there on saturday to pick it up by xyz time please can you no 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 you don't I, I don't want what you don't need to beg you don't have to sure i can do it you know what i mean i can do it for you no problem thank you so much got it <laughs> you know what i mean when people start to meet for me i know how i am and when people ask me to do something, I I would just do it. But I, it's my answer normally nine times out of ten is going to be yes. But so when I ask people for something, I hate to hear excuses. I hate to hear, well, I have to. Are you and then a million and one questions behind it? It's like can you or can you not? You know what I mean? It's just as simple as that. And for me, I I understand how humble it is for someone to ask you for something you know and for and for people to make that person work even harder to 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 to, to give you explanation as to why they need it when they need it 
Are you sure you need, like, that to me is you being just over the top. Can you do it or not? You know what I mean? And it's like, when people do that, why are you, if that's you, why are you doing all that? What's all the million and one questions for? Can you just help the person or can you not? It's just that simple. And so when people actually need my help, I, I don't. I don't want you to have to like explain you don't have to explain if you want to that's fine but I'm letting you know you don't have to explain all the details I'm more than willing to do it just because you are you humbled yourself enough to ask and it's not it's not it's not easy to ask and I know for me I don't ask a lot of help for a lot of help and I just don't want to hear what people got to say because nine times out of ten I hear a lot of excuses before they even get to the yes so the last two weeks were, were were filled with opportunities for me to give. I want to make sure I'm not missing out on anything. Um, yeah. Oh, just going to see my sister. Just traveling to go visit her. That's an act of giving too because you're giving your time. I wanted to spend some time with my sister. and We brought the whole family down. We spent the weekend with her and we had a great time. Um, not having anything really planned, and but we had a fabulous time. We took the kids to the Pittsburgh Children's Museum, and yo, that's adult museum right there. We really had a good time. Even as as adults, we had a good time. Talk about a nice museum where they actually have uh, uh, hands on learning. So it was cute that they showed us with different metals. Your hands could be metals to, to play a piano. Like, it, it, it just connected the connectors. It was just really different. I've never seen it before. And I was like, wow, this is a go-to. When we go back to Facebook and we bring our kids, we're going right back to that museum. They had, um, for the, the 9 and, and, and 10 and 11 and 12-year-olds, if you want to learn how to create, um, to make clothes, or to make jewelry, they have actual workshops. Not that you're sitting here li listening to a teacher, that it's just a whole open room of like fabrics and needles. They have sewing machines. They have um, they have embroidery. They have uh, how to make glass. Like you could just go in there and just have so much fun exploring and being creative. They have a whole work room for you to create jewelry and earrings and necklaces. And it was really, really cool, cool, very fascinating. And so go ahead, Pittsburgh, to your children's museum. Thumbs up on that. But just to, to, to spend quality time, taking the time out just to visit somebody was an act of giving. So God, thank you so very much for that. And I pray that there is more to come um, for me to just have opportunities to what, guys? I'm going to say it last one time, give, all right? Moving on, because I don't have much time. Uh, moving on, um, I also was waking up between 5 to 5.30 every single morning, uh, getting on my knees. Now, normally when I pray, I pray like, you know, standing up, pray maybe with my eyes open, just walking around, just talking to the Lord. But this time, um, I wanted to make it a point to, to, to get on my knees and actually pray. Uh, one is a different form of, 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 of yielding to God, you know. And then I realized as I was doing that, I was really... Um, really in the zone <laughs> bowing down to him praying actually allowed me to think clear like i had more to say in my prayers and and it was really good to channel that also you would think at 5 5 30 in the morning i'm still half asleep but no, getting on my knees actually woke me up in a sense. And it's like, and it's been very consistent. I don't mind getting up at that at, er, that early in the morning to pray and making him my first, giving him my first, my first time of the day, my first prayer, my first line of communication. Because everybody else is asleep. So I'm not saying good morning to anybody. I'm saying good morning to the Lord, right? So it was really good to, to, to get me up at that time. I think I'm going to still keep that going even after the fast because I I, I I love that connection that I'm feeling with him. I'm feeling more productive with him, right? 
Amen. So waking up, praying to read the word. Amen. Towards the scriptures that I um, found throughout the two weeks, I went into the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter uh, 43, verses 18 through 19, and it reads, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Amen. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen. So everything that I've done in the past, forget about that. Me not being the biggest giver, forget about that. See, I'm doing something new in you. Even your business that you have, Ashley. I'm speaking to myself, or God's speaking to me, right? You started a business back in 2020. 2022, I'm making you, I'm helping you to restructure it, to rebrand it. I'm giving you something new here, right? See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it, right? Are you not aware of what's happening? Oh, goodness, right? So then it goes, then he, and then it says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I am giving you provision, provision in this season. So I need to pay attention to what God is doing now. Stop focusing on what has happened in the past, what I used to do, did not do, what I didn't learn, what I did know. What I, Just who cares about all that? I need to be in the moment right now. You need to be in the moment right now. Right where you are is where God wants you to be. What happened yesterday, last week, last month, last year, it doesn't matter anymore. You are in the position where you need to be. I am in the position where I need to be. And so I need to start focusing on the today and the tomorrow. Okay, but really today, because tomorrow can worry about itself. That's what the Bible says, right? It will worry about itself. I can't add another day to my life. I can't do that, only God can. So I need to be in the moment today and see that God is doing something new in me, right? All the old things are of the past, amen? So I'm excited about that scripture. Also, the verse of, uh, he gave me uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter five, verse 16, and that reads in the same way, amen? Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So it goes perfectly with everything that he has um, given me opportunity to do, which is to give. And by me giving was bringing light to those people. Hallelujah. It was the light. It says, let your light shine. So my light was shining before others, right? That they may see your good works, my good deeds. Right? So that they can see your your good deeds. I say it works, but good deeds and glorify, right? Your father in heaven. So by my good deeds, helping people, the light has been shined or shone. <laughs> Who gets the glory? It's not me. I don't get the glory for doing the deeds. God gets the glory. God gets the glory, not I. It's not something. Even when we're doing our best, it's not about us. It's about who? God. And that's all that matters. If he gets the glory, what you're doing as well. Amen. So by me being uh, a giver, the light is, sh my light is shining. Because God is using me as a vessel for them. Amen. So that scripture really applied for the last two and a half, three weeks. <laughs> and, and, and it's really shown itself to be true. Oh my goodness. Because every time I did a good deed, they said, God, oh my goodness. God's going to bless you. Not so much bless me, but they don't realize that it's being blessed back to them. But they understand the word God. Ooh. 
God. They're understanding the word God. They're putting that in their mouth. They're speaking his name off their lips in the name of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. He gets the glory. He gets the satisfaction when we do well. So I'm glad that God is using me as his vessel. So I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. So the foods, let's move on to the foods. <laughs> the foods that I've eaten over the last uh, two weeks, um, I had made um, a tortilla pizza, added a bunch of vegetables on top. I will have some pictures for you to see vegetables on top, um, some marinara sauce, some uh, plant-based black mozzarella cheese, some mushrooms and onions, and some garlic and basil. Mm, it was really good. Um, also, my husband made a stir-fry dish. Very good. Um, he might have been better than me on that one. Um, we went to Pittsburgh and my sister had us try some sweet potato noodles and it wasn't bad. You know, ordering from a restaurant, you really don't know exactly what you're getting. But um, we were trying our best that we were asking all the right questions over the phone before we were ordering off their menu. What's in it? Is there any sugar? Blah, blah, blah. All this extra stuff. So we were trying to be on our best behavior and um, eating uh, right while we were on our little small getaway. So we did our due diligence but we had tasted the um the sweet potato noodles and that was really good uh, we did ate some veggie vegan burgers um we also when we were in Pittsburgh we did lettuce wraps with the um plant-based burgers and and with that it was just two lettuce uh pieces of lettuce at the top and the bottom and in between it had the uh like tomatoes your onions they did the uh uh, whole grain mustard um, we did uh, I think that was what was in the as a, yeah that was what was packed in and then in the burger too and I did a side salad with that um, I did a grits bowl this morning <laughs> a grits bowl that had um, this plant based uh, like uh, wannabe sausage I guess you can call it um, and then there was some carrots and some uh, onions and other things like that and that was mixed up inside there. Um, I did a tomato, basil, and olive oil noodle dish. Um, kind of like the, um, when you go to Caraba, you can get like uh, just the, 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 the basic spaghetti dish that they be having, but it's better, way better. It's not marinara sauce. You can create your own. So you will take the, the, um, the plump tomatoes and you add that into um, you saute that in olive oil and some onions and some um, garlic and then it starts to burst as it gets warm and heated up and you kind of make your own sauce that way and then just add the different seasoning to that and then I had whole grain pasta noodles 100% whole grain pasta noodles and added that in and along with some basil season that bad boy up delicious I did mashed potatoes without regular milk or butter we use the oat milk uh, butter to, to put that in there and some almond milk um, I crushed up some some uh, not crushed up but I did dice up some uh, not scallions what's it called oh it's the little oh my goodness I can't think of that onion oh it's a little oh I can't think right now slice up some onions it's not onions it's not the white yellow it's not the red. Oh my goodness, I can't think. It's not scallions either. I can't think of the other onion, but anyway, I did that. Add a little bit of rosemary in that bad boy. A little bit of garlic, and that, those mashed potatoes taste like regular mashed potatoes. I kid you not. So good. And some sea salt and some pepper. And then, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't forget about my curry and potato dish. That was banging. Because that cause for no sugar, cause for no milk or anything like that. You could just use um, a pot of water, add some like, um, make some like a, a, like a, some type of stock, vegetable stock, I guess you call it, with some onions and some celery, put some oat milk butter in it, and let that, let that boil. And there go your, 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 your broth, right? And then you add that over to the top of your potatoes. Um, 
I had put in some red peppers, green peppers, some onions in that bad boy. Yes, I used a little, um, the creamery. I have potatoes, a little, a little small yellow potatoes. Cube that cut it, cut those up in cubes. Add your cumin, marsala, um, add some uh, curry, and some turmeric to that, and just bake it. It's so good. You can even use the brown rice for it if you want to add some more, you know, something else to fill it up with. It's really good. Really good. Really good. And I can't really think about anything else. I did find a toasted oats. <laughs> basic like cereal like a cheerio can't use cheerios but cheerios actually have sugar in it but toasted oats had no sugar in it so almond milk i did add some cinnamon in it and it was really good as far as a bowl of cereal if you want some cereal on the way a little touch of honey 100 percent raw honey call it a day but i don't want to hold you up any longer i just wanted to share with you uh my 21 day daniel fast did it the way that I felt in my spirit to do. Um, I learned a lot about the, the 21 day fast. I did. There are some takeaways from this that I think I will, can, will continue to do even outside of the fast. Um, such as, like I said before, waking up at 5, 5.30 in the morning to do my prayer and, do, and read the word. Definitely going to keep that... Um, some of the, the dishes that I, I made, I think I will still continue to keep cooking that way. Um, here and there, just because it, it still tastes the same without all the calories and extra additives to it. Why not? It's, it's healthier, right? <laughs> so I will uh, still continue to cook some dishes the same way. There are other dishes you still need to add some other stuff to it. But um, yeah, overall, I didn't think that the food eating the foods were were terrible it actually helped me to open my eyes to see cooking in a different way right and to to play around with different um seasonings and and play around with different dishes that i wouldn't necessarily go outside of the box with but i had to and i learned how to tweak it and to make it still flavorful so this was all a great experience at the same time as learning and getting closer to God and um, in really hearing God clearly because he was giving me clear instructions um, during this time doing these videos for sure <laughs> and not really caring about the way I look because I know I look crazy I don't have no makeup on really I did a little something to my hair but nothing much to it I didn't do the whole nine in any of these videos so I know I look crazy but that is what he wants me to this is why he wants me to do it in the way he wants me to do because he wants me to not care not care so he wants my words to speak before the visual that makes sense so um he's helping me to get rid of my insecurities and just do this because he told me to regardless of what i look like or sound like because that is what was keeping me from doing it in the first place so with that being said i thank you so much for watching and being with me on this journey um i pray for you to find it in your heart to uh, proceed with the 21 day Daniel fast is really not that hard the weeks actually go by fast but you, you know why because you're indulging into the spirit so every day is something new every day you're looking forward to a new instruction every day you're looking forward to hearing God's voice just to talk to you tell you about yourself tell you about the people around you whatever you're seeking he will answer and you will hear him clearly without the distractions of whatever else you're cutting out because again I cut out all my reality shows I cut out all the the, the, the television that would really distract me um, and keep me away from him um, I did watch some television like some sports programs um but it really that doesn't really do anything for me i could care less really about it um there was like a a big boxing match that my husband and i we watch don't make no difference to me i probably fell asleep on it to be honest with you here and there but um 
my thing is really is my TV shows, so I had to restrict that. Um, that was like probably outside of the feds, the biggest thing I wanted to also restrict myself from. And also for social media, I haven't been on there to scroll, so I posted here and there, but it wasn't posting to watch it view and to make sure people see the video uh, it wasn't any of that so I wasn't on social media um, only when he told me to go on there to help me to, to design to make sure whatever to see how people are doing their product placements um, but other than that I really wasn't I took myself off of that I took myself from, from the television with reality shows and even let me tell you something he made me feel so guilty for even reading on Google about what happened to these reality stars <laughs> He was like, you can't even read about them. So there was, it was just so funny because there were so many different articles about all these reality stars that I, I, I um, watch that I couldn't even read what was going on with them. And then after a while, I was like, who cares? I don't even care to even go back to even find it. It's just a bunch of junk. Who cares, right? Um, so I'm very proud of myself for completing this. Now, I want to say this might be the second or third time I've done I think the second time. Did the Daniel Bassett. I am very pleased with it. So again, I encourage you to do it too. Um, <laughs> it's not that bad, and you'll get a lot out of it. All right. Well, thank you for joining me on this episode of Faithful Hustler. I will see you again very soon. Keep a like. Don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. All right. Until next time. Mwah.